Okay. Good morning. As we go to the chitas of the day, uh, we are holding. Today is the 24th day of Nissan. It is a Tuesday. We're holding the third part, the chapter Shlishi of, uh, of the chitas of the day. And a fire went out before God. Chapter 9, verse number 24. And a fire went out before God. And the eight, the eight that was on the Mizbeach that uh, they brought, the burnt offering and all the fats. And the entire Jewish people saw, and they sang praises. And they fell upon their face. Verse number, uh, chapter number 10, verse number 1. They and another Vavi, the sons of Aaron, took a pan. They put upon it fire. They put upon it incense. And they brought it before God. A foreign fire. Which you were not commanded to do, they did a service that they were not commanded. Verse number two, the fire came out before God, and the fire ate them. And they passed and they died. So now she says, Number one, there's many reasons the Gemara says that they uh, died. Number one is because they said something before Moses and Moses, the teacher, they made they passed in the law. They also Rabbi Shmuel said because they drank wine before they went into the base of Midrash, even though it doesn't say that in the Torah. But Rabbi Shmuel says we must say that that's the reason because the proof is that right after this, God tells to Aaron, don't drink wine when you go into the temple. So, uh it must be that they drunk wine. They had they they got intoxicated with wine. Because why would God command them right after that that they shouldn't do that? Verse number three. Yehim Moshe Adin and Moses said to Adin, "Who adava shadiva Hashem? This is what God has commanded. God, the, the God has said, the Kroivaya Kodesh. From those that are close to me, I will sanctify the temple. I'll call I'll call I'll play call Adam." And before all people at COVID, I will be glorified. By Yidim Arin, and Arin was silent. So now she says, Who are Dova? This is what God has said. When did God say that? It says before, I am sanctified with those who glorify me. I'll take a Bechvoidi. Don't say with my glory, those who honor me, I am sanctified. Moses said to Aaron, I, I knew that the Beis Hamikdash will be sanctified by those that are close to God. I thought it would be me or you. Now I see that these two sons, your two sons, not in my view, are greater than us. They did it, they self understood, did it to serve God. They had a chukka, they had a great, great desire in the service of God. By Yidim Aaron, Aaron was silent. Uh, she says he received reward for his silence. And what was the reward? That God spoke to him personally the following command, which he's going to say soon. Bikroivai, what means those done near to me? To those that I have chosen. And now she says, when a God does a judgment with the righteous, people see the righteous people suffer, brings upon a fear on people. Because people think, wow, if the righteous suffer, look at a righteous person who loves God and look how he's or she is going through suffering. People realize how serious things are. That uh, God is very particular in everything that happens in the world, and if God is is for some reason punishing the righteous, that means that surely the wicked have to start to worry. 
Verse number four. And Moses called Mishal and and the sons of Uziel. Who Uziel was the David Adam was the uncle of Adam. Cousins. And he told them, go and carry your brothers. From the holy, to the outside attempt to be buried, outside the camp. Shalashi says, Uziel, Uziel was the brother of Amram. So he was the uncle of Moses and Aaron. And the cousins of the, uh, no, he's a great uncle of uh, Dustin of Avinim. And the uh, great uncle of uh, of Eliezer and his son. Suasa Chechem, God of Emel Achaveri, like a person who says to his friend, "Have that, that you have to take away the the somebody got for died at a wedding. You're not going to stop the wedding. You're going to say, take the person out. The chasna, the wedding should continue. Not going to stop the wedding because somebody got for died. So too." Moshe Rabbeinu said, we can't stop the dedication of the temple at this present time. We're still in the service of the dedication of the temple. Mm -hmm. You have to take these two wonderful people out, and this dedication needs to continue. The service of the temple needs to continue. And so they did that. Verse number five. They approached, and they carried them with their tunics when they close. Out of the camp. So that's over here that they got burned. They were burned from the inside. That means their clothes and the body actually stayed a whole. The fire went through their nostrils and took their souls. Verse number six. And Moses, and Moses said to Aaron and his two sons, his two leftover sons, you're not allowed to leave, do not leave your heads unshorn. Do not render your garments. These are the things that a mourner does. They render their garments. Here's also something that you see that when somebody passed away, we render our garments. We don't, uh, it's a ribbon. That's not the, that's not the mitzvah. You see a verse right over here. So you have to render your garments. You have to tear the garments of your clothes. And uh, that's what a mourner needs to do. And a mourner is not allowed to cut his hair. So, uh, so but they, a regular Jew that does this, it doesn't, it doesn't, but them, they are doing the service in the temple. And, and they are not allowed to mourn while they're doing the service in the temple. Yeah, they're not allowed to mourn. And the rest of the Jewish people will have to mourn for you. The rest of the Jews will mourn your mourning. You are not allowed to mourn. You have to continue the service of the temple. This is one of the things that mourning is, that the certain things that breaks mourning. Like if a person passed away right before Yontiv, the Yontiv breaks the mourning. They're not, they're, 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 they don't sit shiva. If they sat a couple of minutes before Yontiv, the Yontiv will break the mourning. They don't sit shiva anymore. Um, so too, the service in the temple breaks the shiva, and then then they're, they're not they're not supposed to sit, they're not allowed to sit shiva. So that she says, "Al tegila sa al tefro, you not allowed to take a haircut." So from here we learn that an avil, a, a mourner, is prohibited from from cutting his hair. He has to let his hair grow, and um, but uh, but they were obligated. The koyin actually was obligated to cut his hair. I think the koyin gadol cut his cut his hair every day. Abad, but because if you mourn in the temple, you'll be your 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 chayiv misa, your opposite of life, and your brothers will cry for you. So Rashi says, from here we learn that uh, the tzara of a talmud chacham, the sadness of a sage, is a sadness of the Jewish people. Verse number seven. Pesach el melech say to, and from the entrance of the tent of meeting, you cannot leave. You have been anointed. You have the anointing oil upon you. You cannot leave the temple. You're stuck here right now. And they did exactly what Moshe said. So the rest of the Jews who did the funeral and mourned the death of these two sons of Aaron, or Aaron and his two sons, 
stayed in the base of Middash to continue the service of the day. What a, an unbelievable self-constraint these Aaron and his two sons had. And then God spoke to Aaron saying, in the verse number nine, Yain we say, do not drink wine that will lead to intoxication. Ata you Vanecha and your sons Itah with you, when you come to the tent of meeting. Belaisa Musu and you will not die. Hukas Elam the Sekham, this is an everlasting law. Rashi says, Yain we say, we're not talking about stam drinking, we're not talking about regular drinking wine. We're talking about drinking wine for the sake of getting drunk. She says that whether it was for the service in the coming into the base of Middash or whether it was the service on the, on, 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 on the altar, doesn't make a difference. A Kayin is not allowed to do any kind of service in the temple if he was intoxicated. To distinguish between what's holy, because if you're intoxicated, you cannot distinguish between what's holy and what's, what's profane. What's pure and unpure. And that was a very important service of the Kayin that he knows exactly what's a kosher thing, what's not a kosher thing, what's a pure animal, what's not a pure animal, what in the animal itself makes it pure or not. It, there's too many issues that a Kayin needs to know that if he's intoxicated, he cannot make that difference. And so too, the next verse, verse 11. Ulahara is Ibn Israel. Not only do you have to do the service in the temple, you have to instruct the children of Israel. It's called a regarding all the statutes. God said to Mo, through Moses. So that's so we here did the Torah even emphasize not only a koyin, but even a regular rabbi. A regular rabbi who's going to be asked questions in Jewish law is not allowed to become intoxicated. Because if he becomes intoxicated, how can he be a judge? or be a Jewish codifier of law if he's an intoxicated person and he doesn't understand the difference in situations. So, a Kayin is not allowed to become intoxicated when he does a service, and a rabbi, but sitting in judgment, is not allowed to be intoxicated. The only difference is, Rashi says, difference between a Kayin and a rabbi is that a rabbi is not put to death if he's intoxicated. But the Torah over here says a koyin that does the service while he's intoxicated is gets misbehaved shemayim has the penalty of death for that. That ends the chumash of the day. We now go to the tanya of the day. We are holding now the twenty fourth day of Nisan. We are holding chapter forty two of Tanya. 42nd chapter. Now, the Rebbe has explained the power of Ava and Yira in our lives and how it's important. Ava, Sashem, and Yira. Ava, love of God and fear of God in our lives. And the Alta Rebbe explained that it's like the wings of a bird. Just like a bird needs two wings. To fly if he has one wing he cannot fly he needs both wings so too our service needs its two wings and the two wings of the service is Ava and Yira if we don't have these two services Ava and Yira we can't fly meaning the mitzvah cannot go above that's the meaning of flying it cannot ascend Lamaila the mitzvah will stay here and it cannot, the aura of the mitzvah cannot ascend above. Because it needs its wings. It needs these two entities. Ava, love of God and fear of God. Now the Rebbe said there's two kinds of love and there's two kinds of fears. There's an Ava and a Yira that comes through contemplation. And there's an Ava and a Yira that comes through your natural, the David that gave you inheritance. Every person, Ava and Yira. And the Alter Rebbe says that even though we have this in eight avenues, we need to have a little bit of contemplation. We need some aspect of to be able to have a little bit of avas Hashem and Hashem in our minds. And that is what's called Yira Tata. The lower level of fear. The 
out that ever says, meaning chapter 42 of Tani, in a Mashin is by Leel, light of what has already been said, in Yira Tata, on the subject of the lower level of fear. You, Van Hete, will clearly understand Mashakosu Begmara, will understand what's written in the Talmud. Bosik on the verse, Ata Shma Yisrael. It says, Here Israel, Mo Hashem Alekecha. What is God asking of you? What is God asking you? Moses turns to the Jewish people and says to the Jewish people, What is God asking of you? Kim Liyiras Hashem Alekecha. God is asking you one thing to fear God. Gemara says, and the Gemara asks a question. Atu Yira Milsa Zutasi. God, Moshe Rabbeinu turns to the Jewish people and he says, what is God asking for you? God is asking to you to fear him. Oh, that's very, is that a simple thing? Fearing God is an easy thing to accomplish that. We just learned it's not easy to accomplish real fear of God because you need to have real contemplation to be able to come to a true fear of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So is that easy to do? The Gemara asks the question. The Talmud answers, in, yes, it is easy. Why? The Gabi Moshe, Milsa Zutasi. In, by Moshe Rabbeinu, it's easy. That's what the Gemara answers. The Gemara answers, by Moshe Rabbeinu, it's easy. It ends the subject. What's the answer? What is the meaning of the answer? For the Gabi Moshe, and by Moshe Rabbeinu, it's easy. Moshe Rabbeinu is talking to the Jewish people. He's not talking to himself. He says to the Jews, God is asking only to fear him. What's the meaning? What's the Gemara answer to Moshe Rabbeinu, it's easy. He's not talking to himself. He's talking to the Jewish people. The Rashi, the Rebbe asked the question. It doesn't make sense. The answer. So show me Moshev. Moshe Rabbeinu is telling what, the, what God wants from you, not what he wants from me. Yeah, if, if I would say, what does God want from me? I should fear him. Yeah, to me, it's easy to fear God. But he's saying what God wants from you. And when Moshe Rabbeinu said that statement, he's not only saying it to the Jews that were in the desert. He's talking to the Jewish people of, uh, throughout history. He's telling them, Jews throughout history, what God wants for you to fear. So what is the meaning of the Gemara? So here the Alter Rebbe introduces us, Apikabola, to an unbelievable concept. And we only can understand this Gemara according to Kabbalah. And it's the connection of souls. And here the Alter Rebbe, Le'inu, Ki Chol Nefesh Ben Neshem Veis Yisrael. The Alter Rebbe says, Apikabola, every soul of every Jew Yes, has within him a spark of Moshe Rabbeinu. That's what he's called Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu was called the Rai Mahem, the truth shepherd. Not only the shepherd of his generation, the shepherds of all generations. And what does it mean that he's our shepherd? He's our teacher? It's because he has a spark of him in each and every one of us. To Mishiva Aroyim. Because he's for the seven shepherds. He's for the seven shepherds of the Jewish nation. The seven main shepherds from Avram Avinu, Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, and Yosef, and Levi, and Amram, and, 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 and Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu. Actually, it's Avram, Yitzhak, Yaakov, Levi, Avram, Yitzhak, Lagi, Levi, Amram, and Moshe Rabbeinu. I'm missing somebody. Levi, Kohas, Levi, Amram, Levi, Kohas, Amram, Avram, Yitzhak, Lagi, Levi, Kohas, Amram, and, and then this Moshe Rabbeinu was the seventh leader. So Moshe Rabbeinu was the seventh leader of the Jewish nation from Avram Avinu. And as, as the Rebbe writes in the famous Maimer, all seven are special. 
Moshe Rabbeinu, as the seventh leader, had the capability of bringing the Torah down to the Jewish nation. Hamam Shechem, and, and so too these seven leaders, which are called the Royim, shepherds. Why are they called shepherds? Because they're Mam Shechem, Chayes, Elekos, Lecholos, Nisham, Yisrael, Shavakishalachem, Nekroi, Mishem, Royim. They, they bring about, they flow of godliness to every Jew, and that's why they're called shepherds. But what's the main shepherd of ours? That's what called Moshe Rabbeinu. The main shepherd to us is Moshe Rabbeinu. Even though we're connected to Avram and Yitzhak and Yankev and Levi and Kahas and Amram, but what's our main shepherd? Is Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Kibbal Teirah Messina and Mesara. Moshe. He's our shepherd. He's our teacher, teacher of the Jewish people in his time and teacher of the Jewish people to, uh, forever. So he has a connection, his soul has a connection to each and every Jew. And he gives us our strength. Look at the explanation. Just as a shepherd provides nourishment to his sheep, thereby supplying them with vitality, so do the seven shepherds. Sustain the Jewish souls with the vitality of godliness, each from his own spiritual level. I'm going to provide the Jewish spiritual back to Chesed, and so on and so forth. I'm going to Chesed, and Yitzhak gave and and Yaakov gave the concept to Feres, etc. See them relate that the Alter Rebbe pondered for a considerable number of weeks. Whether the right of the seventh shepherd provided godly vitality, or whatever he should write, the vitality and godliness, he finally resolved to write the latter vitality and godliness. For vitality refers to love and fear of God, since it the since. It is they that vitalize one's performance of Torah and Mitzvahs. Godliness refers to self nullification before God. The seven shepherds, the seven shepherds then cause both vitality, emotional connection, and godliness to flow into the Jewish soul. Moshe Rabbeinu, all of us shalom, out of the seven. Moshe Rabbeinu Klolius Kulo. He comprised the actions of all of them. Because all of them are called shepherds. Moshe Rabbeinu is called the Raya Mehemna, the faithful shepherd. The faithful shepherd. Moshe Rabbeinu Kalzoya is called the faithful shepherd. Shemamshe Meshinas Adas Lakol Shisro. Because Moshe Rabbeinu, that's why he's called Moshe Rabbeinu. Because Moshe Rabbeinu. Brought, brought about in the Jewish people the concept of the quality of knowledge. Ledeus Hashem to know God. So the rest of them were more in the concept of faith. Moshe Rabbeinu brought about the concept of Das. To have the concept of knowledge. This is also one of the concepts of the Alter Rebbe. The Alter Rebbe coined Chabad. Bachma bina das. You can have emotional, only an emotional relationship with God. The Alter Rebbe wanted to have das. That every person should have das. That a Rebbe, a Rebbe is not there to live for you. A Rebbe. What is the, what is the obligation of a Rebbe, a leader, is to inspire you to do yourself. To become your own person. Not that you live through the Rebbe. But you live, you live with the Rebbe. You live with the inspiration of the Rebbe. The Rebbe gives you knowledge. That's what Moshe Rabbeinu gave to the Jewish people. He gave them the capability that they should have their own das. That's why it says in the Pinky Office, Moshe Kibbal Torah, Messina Mesora. He gave it over. He gave it all, he gave, he, gave, he, he was the one. Who brought down the Torah? He channeled the Torah to the world, but he channeled it in a way that every person can have their own das. That's unbelievable. That's an unbelievable capability. 
That's why he's called Moshe Rabbeinu. Moses, our teacher, the teacher of the world, the teacher of history, the teacher that gave the capability from the time of the giving of the Torah till today for every Jew to be able to learn Torah. And therefore, we are all connected to Moshe. Moshe. Torah Tzivalanu, Moshe. Torah that Moshe Rabbeinu taught us. Moshe Rabbeinu gave us all a spark of him. That just like he knew the Torah, each and every one of us can know the Torah. It's not exclusive anymore. It's for everybody. Moshe Rabbeinu had that capability. Moshe Rabbeinu gave the capability of Das to every Jew according to his capability. From a very low capacity to a very high capacity. It doesn't make a difference. Moshe Rabbeinu said, the Torah is not exclusive book. Everyone, I'm giving the capability for everybody to have a connection to the Torah. All came about according to the degree of its nature from the root of the soul of Moshe Rabbeinu. It's all the way we connect to Moshe Rabbeinu. How we connect to our teacher. Our Chololistic teacher. Our general teacher. Who is the general teacher of the Jewish nation? Moshe Rabbeinu. Raya Mehemna. Shepherd of faith. Self-understood. Darizah writes on this Zohar that the Moshe Rabbeinu of every generation has a greater connection to the Moshe Rabbeinu, the soul, the, the general soul of Moshe Rabbeinu. And therefore, the, the Pasuk says, to cleave to God is to cleave to a tzaddik in your generation. Because he has a much greater nitzot of Moshe Rabbeinu. HaMashadashet B'dasel, Moshe Rabbeinu's soul is connected to the wisdom of God. Which is connected to their emanate to God. That's why it says Moshe Rabbeinu. Zoya says Moshe Rabbeinu is an Ashama of Atzilis. The Ashama from the world of Atzilis. Shehu, the world of emanation. Shehu and in that world, in, in that world, in the world of emanation, Kabbalah says there is Das. The wisdom of God, the knowledge of God, and the knowledge of God is connected to God. It's one with Him. As the Rama writes, "Who are they? Who are mother? He is the knowledge, and He's the knower." Now, the Alter Rebbe is going to say, "That's the that's the connection between the leader." Beyond this. You say, who's the Moshe Rabbeinu in, your, in my generation? Yer the nitzus minishmas Moshe Rabbeinu all of our shalom. It descends in every generation, a spark of Moshe Rabbeinu. May he, may peace be unto him. Mislavish begul for nefshish v'shachach mehader eneida. And they close it, there's this nitzus, a greater spark of Moshe Rabbeinu comes into the souls of the righteous and the wisdom of those that are the leaders of the generation, which are called the eyes of the congregation. The eyes of the congregation. So Rashi, I mean, the commentary over here says, because a spark of Moses found within the spiritual leader is called Moses. As Talmud's expression, Moses, do you speak aright? This spark is closed not only in the leader's soul, but also in his body. That is why Chassidim say that one never tires on gazing at a Rebbe. For within him is a spark of Moses. Wow. These sparks, which are closed in sages and spiritual leaders, enables them, they become leaders. Lamed Dasasam, to impart knowledge to the people. That may they may know the greatness of God. And to serve God with their whole heart and soul. So that is what the avoid of tzaddikim are and the leaders of the Jewish people. That they bring about, just like Moshe Rabbeinu did, bring about the knowledge of God 
to the to the world. That's the Rav Vayda, to be able that every person, not that they that people shouldn't uh, they should just follow what they say, but people should be able to learn on their own, and they reveal knowledge that everybody should be able to connect to it themselves. So that's the avoid. It's like Moshe Rabbeinu gave the cape, Moses gave the capability for every Jew to have knowledge of God, each person according to the capability. That's the avoid of every leader, great sages in our generation too. Why? Because the service of the heart, one's love and fear of God, he lived Ultimately, everything is according to knowledge. It's according to your capability of knowledge. And the better knowledge you have, the better da- the better emotions you have. Which it causes. That's like avicha. The verse says, know the God of your father. If you know the God of your father, you'll serve him with, a, with all your heart and with a longing soul. If you know your father, you'll serve him better. So too, if you know God, you're going to serve him better. Know the God of your father. So therefore, how do we have das? That's why it says, to connect to a tzaddik. So by, by connecting to a tzaddik, connecting yourself to a great sage. So hopefully the sage gives you, doesn't, you don't just, just listen to the sage, the sage gives you knowledge. The say gives you the capability to have your own knowledge, to learn by yourself, to inspire yourself, so that you'll be able to have more avas Hashem, yiras Hashem, because that's the most important thing. Most important thing is to serve God with love and fear. And the more knowledge you have, the more love and fear you're going to have. When Mashiach comes, it says, What's gonna happen? Mashiach comes. You're not gonna. You're not gonna. You're not gonna need anymore to learn from anybody. Because why? When Mashiach comes. Everybody will have knowledge. Everybody will be great sages. I can't wait. <laughs> everybody will be great sages. We won't need to have. Concept of we'll all be chachamim, and that's what it says. So that's why it says over here in the nation only at the time, only at this at, at that time will a teacher be unnecessary. However, in our era, one needs to have a mentor, yeah. impart knowledge of God greatness. If one's to know how to serve Him, the heart and soul. And one dependent on Moses th- through the intermediary scholar of each generation, the spark of most of the very essence of one's divine to uh, 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 is, is of the very essence of divine service. That's why it's important. That's why the Mishnah Pirk says, "A sein lachara." Every person needs to have a rab. Every person needs a mentor. Because every, we all want to go higher in our service, our connection to God. And we all need to have somebody who can give us that higher purpose. If the Mashiach comes, we won't need that. However, the essence of knowledge, which leads one to serve God with his whole heart and soul, is not mere knowing alone. That people should know the no not made in law that people should know the greatness of God from authors, sages, and spiritual gods, books. That's not the ikka. If you're gonna be a, a dust dust from others, if you're just gonna have knowledge from others, that's not real knowledge. That's not your knowledge. The Rev again says, you need to use your own brains. The teacher is only there to inspire you. The teacher is only there to give you the capability to tap into a higher knowledge. But if you're not going to use your own brains, it's not going to go anywhere. That's it. 
The most essential thing is that you to immerse his own mind. That's it. Deeply into those things which explain the greatness of God. You need to use your own brains. You just can't repeat somebody else's traits, somebody else's explanation. And somebody, you need to comprehend it yourself. Even though the comprehension of yourself is going to be far from the comprehension of the teacher, it doesn't make a difference. You don't live with your teacher's brain. You live with your own brain. And you live with your own knowledge. And the more you understand it, that is you. So you can't live somebody else's life. You need to live your life. And my life is based according to what I understand. Not according to my some rabbi understood, my father understood, my teacher understood. I live my life the way I understand it. Yep. And if I want to live a fake life, that I think that I'm living some, I'm living with understanding. I am not. So therefore, that is the most important thing, that, it, that you should be inspired by your teacher, connect to a teacher who can bring you higher knowledge. But ultimately, you need to think about it yourself. Until his thought shall be bond with a God with a strong and mighty bond. According to his capability. Not somebody else's bond, his own bond. Just like you're connected when you see a physical thing with your eye, own eyes, you think about it. So that's like you think about the physicality and it has an impression on you and you like it or you want it, or whatever it is, and you get it. So too with God. You need to use the same mind to understand it, comprehend it, and get it. Whatever get it means to your level. It might be a very low level. Doesn't make a difference. God is not asking you to use somebody else's mind. God is asking each person to use his own mind. The Neida as it's known. Shadas who lost in That's what's the important thing is das. Das means to union. There needs to be a union. Between the intellect and you, between the intellect and me, it has to be united with me. Until it's not united with me, it's still a thought. It's a thought in progress. That means it's not a thought in progress anymore. It's why it's what I am. Here is the person, as the Rebbe once said in the Yom Yom when a chassid has to be that a person looks at him and says, "Here is walking a chassid." Here is talking a chassid. Here is eating a chassid. Here is even sleeping a chassid. That means they can see who he is in all aspects of his life. Because he's not a chassid when he learns siddhis. He's not a chassid only when he's middle of prayer. He's a chassid when he's eating. He's a chassid when he's talking. He's a chassid when he's sleeping. That is das. That is unity. Unless the intellectual concept of godliness becomes united with you, that is you, it's not just a concept, it is you, then you have the aspect of truth. So you cannot live with somebody else's knowledge, even though you're inspired by somebody else's knowledge. You're, 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 you're given a, a capability to the teaching of somebody else's knowledge. But ultimately, it's, you have to use your own knowledge. As it's brought down, that when there was a union between Adam and Chava, Adam and Eve, a physical union, the Torah calls it das. Torah calls it the concept of knowledge, that the union, the physical union, was an aspect of das, and that's the true concept of the Alter Rebbe wants that a Jew should have his own das, and that's most important, should be his own human being. Don't live through an other person, even through, don't live through a tzaddik. Don't live through a tzaddik. Live by a tzaddik. Live through the inspiration of a tzaddik, but not that you live through, the, that the tzaddik lives, that you live through the tzaddik, an emotional connection. You need your own das. You need your own intellect. You need to live by yourself, inspired by the tzaddik, connected to the tzaddik. And that's what the Alter Rebbe wanted. That's what he called it. the Chabad, Chachma Bina, Das, wisdom, knowledge, understanding. Have your own understanding. 
Don't only have my understanding, have your understanding. And that completes the Tanya of the day. Today, the 24th day of the month, which starts from the chapter 113 to chapter 118. And uh, you would have done the chitas of the day. It's been a pleasure learning with you guys. Rabbi. Tomorrow. Yes.